Mini PCs. I'm sure you'll agree there's just far too many to choose from, and I think we've finally found one that scratches that itch. We got a sample sent to us for review, and it's a Ryzen 9. It's an absolute beast for emulation, and can it be true that this is capable of 1440p gaming? We'll find out in today's review. Welcome to Team Pandori. Free air. So we got another mini PC from GMK Tech. We've had a few of their mini PCs on this channel, and they're always top notch when it comes to presentation. This one's the Nookbox K4. So for the amount of PC we have here, this is remarkably small. A Ryzen 9 PC in the palm of your hand. Inside this card here we've got the manual. I'm in Japan so this one is in Japanese, Chinese and English. At the very bottom of the box we have another box, which has the VESA mount. This allows us to attach the mini PC to the back of a monitor, pretty handy. There's a HDMI cable, around one and a half meters in length. And we also get a cable for the power adapter. And that adapter should be in the other box. Found it! Good job me! So this power adapter can deliver up to 120 watts. And we need to use it in combination with this cable. Last thing in the box is his warranty card. There. Let's have a closer look. On the top we've got the Ryzen 9 stickers. There's a nice premium feel to it. Looking around the front now, we've got the power button, 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C 4.0, and two USB 3.2 ports. We also have a little pinhole if you want to reset the BIOS. Moving around, we've got some vents for cooling. And on the rear, yet another vent. This is where air gets pushed out. We also have the DC power in, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and we have two more USB ports. One is for USB 3.2, and the other for USB 2.0. Also a very fast 2.5 gig LAN port. Oh, and we also have Kensington. Kensington! On the other side, we've got more vents for cooling. And on the bottom, we have the VESA mounting holes, as well as the area in the center for more cooling. It's time for the size comparison. The Nookbox K4 is slightly smaller than the Chewy N100, and it's a little larger than the GMK Tech M2. Like many other mini PCs, it's completely giant compared to the Chewy Lockbox. It's about four times the size of this little thing. Now let's bring in some Lego. This is Alex from Minecraft. Cute little thing. Compared to a Roybush tea bag, it's about four times the size. If you think this is a whole bit of deja vu, then you're right. The Nookbox K4 uses the exact same case design as the Nookbox K2 that we had on earlier. Let's get to the specs. The Nookbox K4 has a blistering fast 8-core Ryzen CPU. It's a flagship model featuring a faster GPU, 32GB of DDR5, and a full version of Windows 11 Pro installed to the 1TB PCI4 NVMe. It'll be very interesting to see what this is capable of. On first boot, we're greeted to the Windows setup screen. We'll first select our language, country, and things like that. But if your language is not here, just select English and we can add it later. It'll take around 5 minutes, and then to activate, simply connect to the internet using Wi-Fi or the LAN cable. It'll then be good to update to the latest version of Windows, and then we usually say to update the AMD drivers. We tried this, but it turned into a complete headache, so I would say just to leave it as it is and move on. 7940HS boards are dependent on the manufacturer, so if there's an update, you'll need to check their website. If you are having problems with a graphics driver, we recommend using the OS install from here, and then installing the drivers from here. As Internet Explorer sucks, we'd install a decent web browser like Brave. We'd then go to ninite.com to install some free software, like Office and things like that. Then we could go shopping on the internet. Is Amazon with a very nice looking keyboard. If you feel like something different, out the express. Found some cushions that look like dogs. Or we could have a dog slapped onto a t-shirt. Sausages. This mini PC can run Office with no problems at all. When it comes to streaming video, YouTube runs very nicely at 4K. As the AV1 codec is included, it helps by using less bandwidth. Or we could just sit back and watch some Netflix. Or well, how about make some music? Here's FL Studio running the demo song, and the CPU isn't even breaking a sweat. It's at a 20% usage. And even when we use the free version of DaVinci, it's possible to cut up 1440p footage in a 4K timeline. Realistically, we could use this to edit videos. Let's move on to some benchmarks. First up, NVMe. 
This one's running fairly fast, but nowhere touching the limits of the PCA4 lane. In user benchmark we've got another UFO, and the gaming is at 60% a gunboat. The GPU scores 46%, which is substantially higher than the 20% bench we got from the 7735HS. And while the memory is much faster, there's 8 more milliseconds of latency. Is 3D Mark with Time Spy? And even though the scores are quite good, the graph's a bit of a mess, and it shows us we need to raise the TDP when under load. Here's Geekbench. And now for Cinebench. These scores are completely insane. On multi-core, almost double the speed of a 1700X, and in single core, it beats out all of these. And we'll finish off the benches with some Blender. Anyway, let's test some games. First up, some 2D titles. As you can imagine, this little computer handles them with ease. Rocket League high settings 1080p. We're just below a solid 60 FPS, and we'd easily be able to hit full speed by lowering settings just a little bit. This. Dota 2 best looking 4K. We're getting a good frame rate, but sluggish gameplay. Lowering the resolution to 1080p gives us a solid experience. I hear. I accept your guidance. CSGO. See us no problem. Turn it to be high settings. In Fortnite, medium settings on 1080p. While it is playable, frame rate is a bit unstable. But if we change rendering mode to performance, we get 60 FPS and the system is running much cooler. Arcade Geddon, medium settings, 1080p. Even with FSR on, it runs a little bit sluggish. We could do with that performance rendering mode that we had in Fortnite. And it's Tekken 7. Medium settings, 4K, running at a solid 60 FPS. Death Stranding, medium settings, 1080p. If the game allows, we can turn on FSR2 to get higher frame rates. It's now set to performance mode, which speeds up things with a drop in detail. Other operating systems like Batacera run straight up. We've got full sound and even the Wi-Fi works. Bluetooth in Batacera is a bit funky as always, so if you want to use a Bluetooth controller, you'll need to use a dongle. But when it comes to emulation on this system, it's a beast. Dreamcast. Sega Model 3. PlayStation 2. More PlayStation 2 with a better game. PlayStation 3. You, I would do <laughs> and Wii U. For emulation, this mini PC pretty much handles it all. You can pull up the top cover, and we've got easy access to the memory and NVMe. We've got two sticks of crucial 5600 DDR5 memory, and a 1TB NVMe from Lexar. They attached a thin graphene heatsink, and it's quite difficult to remove. But once off, we found that this was a Lexar NM7A1 PCIe4 NVMe stick the OEM version of the Lexar NM710. And the Wi-Fi 6 module is a MediaTek. 
This is the same one that's in the Rog Alley. To open up the bottom, there are four hidden screws under the feet, and in here we can find the heatsink. If you wanted to, you could take this off and reapply the thermal paste. As we mentioned earlier, this is similar to the Nookbox K2. The cases are identical, but the biggest noticeable difference are the speeds when it comes to games. The Ryzen 7735 could only give us 28 FPS in the Final Fantasy XV benchmark, whereas the 7940 could give us 35. Altering the TDP in the BIOS is possible. To do so we're going to Boot, and then Power Mode Select. Quiet is for 35 watts, Balance for 45, and Performance for 54 to 65 watts. Choose one, go to save, and you're good to go. You could alternatively use a third party tool, but we found little to no difference in FPS unless both the GPU and CPU were near 100%. The temperatures were around 10 degrees hotter, and later on in the benchmark it started to skip frames. This is probably due to the extra heat that directly affected the top part of the case, which is where the memory and the NVMe lie. As there's no escape for the heat, it limits our ability to push the system to its maximum potential. Meow. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech Notebox K4 is extremely powerful, not only managing day-to-day -day tasks, but can also play games at 1080p. With its premium looks and branded components, it's nice to see this much PC at a reasonable price. Unfortunately, it's let down by the lack of cooling when it comes to the memory and NVMe. Drivers for this chipset are still in their early stages, and only having HDMI 2.0 is a bit of a shame. The GMK Tech K4 is a very capable PC, especially when it comes to production and emulation. If you don't need the latest games in 4K, this rocks donkey balls. As we finish off this review, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Tim Pandori we make video reviews like this, make video tutorials, and fix cheap arcade boxes and the A500 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on, or you could simply like and subscribe. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of T Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. ta -ra. I like fish and chips, and a bagel.